Hello and welcome to another episode of Lockdown, Coronavirus Capitalism and Solidarity. I'm Zebedee Parks and we're in the month of May, which is initially going to be where the next big student strike for climate action was going to happen and when Extinction Rebellion was going to have its sort of month of May, which is now a digital rebellion and we're seeing various climate actions happening online. So I thought I'd use this as a bit of an opportunity to talk about coronavirus and climate change, five key points. On to our first point, which is that climate change is going to make pandemics more likely. One of the causes of the coronavirus is the destruction of ecosystems, has put the relationship between humans, animals and wildlife out of whack and is leaving to them all living closer together than ever before. And especially when we look at things like industrial agriculture, when we're looking at ecosystems that have been destroyed and that is leading to animals now living a lot closer to humans than ever has ever happened before. And when we want to look at issues such as Air travel, for instance, which has increased massively and is a big contributor to carbon emissions, but is also one of the ways that this virus has been able to spread so quickly across the globe. The second point is this question of emissions dropping as a result of the coronavirus. I mean, a lot of people have commented about the air quality improving in cities across the globe, which in Australia, the bushfires set a pretty low bar to be improved upon as far as air quality goes. It's much nicer to walk outside now than it was three months ago, even though we're in a pandemic. There's a couple of key points to talk about with emissions drop. The first is that it's only a slight drop and will most likely, based on historical evidence, accelerate the increase of carbon emissions as soon as the lockdown is over. Initially, there was a drop in emissions worldwide due to manufacturing being pretty much suspended in China due to lockdown measures. And we shouldn't see this necessarily as a good thing since A, a lot of people lost their jobs and went into harder economic hardship as a result of it. But secondly, is that manufacturing itself is actually quite important to exist to actually have a safe climate future since how you're going to manufacture, for instance, wind turbines or ventilators which desperately need to deal with the coronavirus right now. Another point that's a common theme across all these lockdown videos is that the coronavirus has revealed what a lot of the issues are in society, but the responses aren't necessarily doing anything to seriously address them. For instance, the coronavirus has, by looking at the drop of emissions, shown that a lot of emissions are based on transport emissions from cars and especially aeroplanes, which we've seen a significant decrease in the amount of travel people are doing, especially air travel, that has led to a decrease in emissions. However, we're not seeing any proposals by governments for mass public transport infrastructure to actually make this a sustainable drop as soon as the lockdown is around. It's probably going to be back to normal air travel as soon as it can be and back to normal car travel. But historically, after numerous economic collapses or even the Spanish flu, there's often been a decrease in emissions. So this has quickly rebounded and led to an accelerated increase in emissions as soon as the crisis is over. And this leads me on to my next point, number three which is how the fossil fuel industry is using this crisis as a way of pushing ahead with their developments in a few different ways. One, it's been a chance for them to push through a lot of approvals for fossil fuel projects, such as mines, without as much public oversight as much ability to protest these approvals because of the lockdown measures. Secondly, we're already seeing anti-climate activism legislation being passed. Thirdly, we're already seeing a lot of mining industries are continuing to be exempted from a lot of lockdown measures so they can continue operations, including in some cases workers travelling into say in Australia since travel bans were imposed and potentially spreading the virus amongst communities as they go to work, fly and fly out on mine sites. Additionally, with the talk of a lot of stimulus packages, we're seeing mining industries putting their hands up for more economic stimulus packages which obviously if you want mass investment in renewable energy is the least last thing you want to be happening as fossil fuel industries taking more public money. The fourth point is how we respond to crises is a question of class. Some people like to use the refrain, we're all in this together, when in fact that couldn't be further from the truth, we're clearly not all in this together. When you're seeing under the coronavirus rich people fleeing to luxury yachts and holiday homes to wait out the crisis and finding themselves in jobs that are a lot easier to work at home than a lot of other communities that are working essential jobs that aren't being provided with adequate personal protective equipment. Just like in climate change, and we're seeing the massive bushfires hit us, like politicians can enjoy nice holidays in Hawaii, or the rich can sort of easily pack up and move to another place and live in somewhere that isn't going to be as harshly affected by climate change, while well, millions of people around the world have basically been left in sacrifice zones. Leaving no one behind, how do we ensure that there's safe transitional programs for workers in affected industries to how do we help climate refugees? So how do we help the global south deal with climate change? And finally, a fifth point is that in crisis there is opportunity. We're already seeing the fossil fuel industry taking advantage. But what do we do as the left, as progressives, how do we take advantage of this opportunity? 
And one of the things is that it's a, the perfect time to push for the radical Green New Deal that we need. When we've seen governments talking about stimulus packages to boost the economy, this is exactly the time you're talking about a mass stimulus package to invest in a different public transport future that's away from heavy air travel and car economies. It's the time to be investing in social services. We're seeing the need for more investment in frontline services such as health and education, public renewable projects, in sustainable agricultural projects, and so many other projects that would create millions of jobs and help transform society to deal with climate change. It also provides a chance to be taking on corporate power. For instance, workers in essential industries, it's the perfect time to be involved in unionizing and taking collective actions so that workers have control over the safety of workplaces and can close workplaces down if they believe they're unsafe to work. And this equally applies to the ability for workers to have the power to close workplaces down if they feel they're not operating sustainably. The coronavirus crisis is giving us a chance to transform society and it's giving us a platform to put our ideas around for mass public investment in the social programs that we need, especially at a time when governments are talking about stimulus packages. To help us on this mission, consider becoming a Green Left supporter today.